five Ps. You know, the five paragraph field order for those who have spent time in the, mil uh, in the military is second nature. Uh, we right. learn it early on in our life, we use it daily, and it becomes embedded in our DNA in a way that we actually use it in our personal life as well. Absolutely. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. You know, situation, mission, execution, logistics, command and control, signal. Those are all the components of putting together an operation uh, to execute just about anything. And so I commend you for taking that principle that you learned in the military and trying to uh, get it into the commercial and the, and the civilian world because it really does work for just about anything you want to do. The military are probably the best planners on the planet uh, because that's what they do all the time. Um, but oh, we yeah. have been occasionally accused of fighting the last war. And so, you know, we have to be very cognizant of the fact that our enemy uh, or the other side that we're competing with oftentimes tries to um, get one step in front of us. I was the deputy director for operations in the National Military Command Center as a one-star general. I wore keys around my neck. Uh, my deputy and I were responsible for sending messages to the nuclear forces to launch Armageddon or World War III. And we practiced yeah. blowing up the world regularly. This is in 1996 to 98. I didn't realize until three years after I left that job that the adversary, uh, after we had spent billions and billions and billions of dollars in creating this deterrent against a nuclear attack, would find a way to get their nose underneath our tent to attack us with box cutters and airplane tickets. Right. And that's right. what happened on 9-11. So it was amazing to watch the adaptable capabilities of our enemies, and they are constantly looking, how are we defending, and how do I get around that defense? Just as we are with the other side. So the oh, yeah. five-paragraph field order is uh, uh, a classic planning technique, which I think can be applied uh, to just about every situation. Before I go into my own situation, let me add one piece. We, we introduced in the mid-80s a thing called commander's intent to paragraph three, execution. And prior yeah. to that, we didn't have commander's intent. It was just, here's execution, concept of operations and the subordinate unit instructions and so forth and so on. And we would detail and spell out in great detail exactly what we wanted somebody to do. And what we realized, I think, in the early 80s was that we were tying the hands of our subordinates. So we introduced this thing called um, commander's intent, which at the time, many people thought was kind of unique and different, uh, when in fact it has been around a long, long time. In Germany, they called it Ausdruck Taktik, and it's been around since the 19th century. And the Germans mastered the ability to tell people what their original objective is uh, rather than how to get there. Here's, here's my intent, because I know that when the first shot is fired, things will get very confusing, communications will break down, and I want to make sure that my team, my subordinates, understand where I'm trying to take this operation, what's the ultimate objective, so that when they lose the ability to talk to me directly and get guidance, they can proceed on their own because they understand ultimately what the objective is. And so um, commander's intent was um, introduced in the mid eighties. Uh, it was very, very important that the commander, the person in charge, the CEO in civilian parlance communicates to his or her team exactly what the objective is at the end state. So that when things go wrong, particularly in a large organization where communications is more complex and uh, at more brittle, that those that are on the front lines who have the ability to influence the strategic sergeant, as we've learned in recent years, can shape the strategy for the entire nation. You know, one soldier, one sergeant, one leader on the front line making a decision to go left instead of right, when his order said go right, but he saw that the situation had changed in a way that he understood what the ultimate objective was, was to get on the objective, 
So he decided, I can't go right like I was told. I need to go left. And he can, he's authorized to make that decision. Now that comes with some risk, obviously, uh, right. but then leaders need to allow risk taking and not penalize subordinates for taking uh, uh, risks that are, that are reasonable. 